Okay, welcome everybody to uh, this week's Crypto Mastery class. We're going to dive into some news and some charts. And uh, if you wouldn't mind, though, real quick, in the chat, there's a link for a survey, a trader survey. We'd like to kind of hear more about you guys and learn more about you. We've been sending that out to our audiences and getting some really great feedback. It's going to help us send out the kind of information that you want here in this uh, this year. So... With that, let's see. Welcome, Lisa, Pirate J, Rennie, Glenn. And um, so let's see. We're going to unpack some news here and and then dive into the charts. Probably be a short class here today. But uh, if you guys have any questions, definitely let me know. And if you're watching the replay on YouTube, you make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And uh, let's see here. Well, let's see. There's a good article here. I was doing research this morning on what's going on, basically. We'll look at charts, of course, look at our indicators. Uh, this uh, pullback here, we've been saying this for weeks, a pullback to around 25.3. I think I think 24.4 won't happen. The 25.3 is a very strong uh, level, so I don't think we'll go below that, but we'll look at some charts and see. And uh, now if it does break below 25,000, then we've got some kind of lower targets in sight. But uh, the first level support, pretty strong one here. Let's just pull that up on the uh, monthly chart, and uh, we'll look at the weekly as well. But uh, just to uh, spoiler alert, you know, we've got very bullish signals here on the monthly chart. We have our ERI, which triggered and has caught every market bottom on the monthly basis in the last four years. So we had that early reversal indicator, just like we had in 2019, just like we had here in 2015. These are part of our, that's our early reversal indicator for those of you that may not have seen it and here. So these are not things we painted on here that's this indicator here down below and the arrows so uh the secondary one the confirmation is the trend strength indicator which similarly has also triggered on each of the market bottoms so you know i believe we have bottomed i don't think that we do see a retest we're down here some people are saying we go back to 14 15 000. i don't think that's going to happen and uh recently here this month here we're finally seeing our signal line cross very impactful important uh, signal on our indicators so these three are known as the three kings and so when they all align we've got very bullish signals here so uh, what we've also had though is three four months of upside candles it's four months since we reversed back in january and so january february march april pushed up to that thirty-two thousand range which i said we would push up to and pulled back from and we have we're due for a pullback here so most likely we pull back down in this range down to around this twenty-five thousand eight hundred is what i'm looking at so you know 25.3 was that very key support line down in this range so we would definitely want to see that hold it could wake down below to that 25.3 and uh, more, more than likely, I think we bounce higher in the June and July. I was watching a, another commentator this morning was talking about cycle theory. Very interesting. And they were saying they think that May will be bullish and then June, July, we pull back. I'm not seeing that. And so our indicators have been dead on on the daily, weekly, monthly timeframes. So that's uh, the narrative that we we're going with. But, uh, you know, You've heard me say a hundred times, show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. So we've got some news. Number of things happening in the markets. We don't need to go into all of it because it's a lot of it's been factored in. The recent bank failure, and uh, that's already kind of been factored in. I think this article here says that. Uh, I'm not going to turn off my ad blocker, but it basically says Bitcoin Republic Bank saga comes to an end. Let's pull up Crypto Panic and uh, then what we might do. I've got another news uh, source. It's great. And it's um, part of the uh, Coin Telegraph Markets Pro. I just, I was trying, to, I didn't have time to queue that up beforehand, but we're going to start using that as our news, part of our news source. So maybe if you guys have any questions, let me know. And off screen, I'll go ahead and pull this up on uh, crypto panic and we can also look at daily hodl this is crypto mastery class usually we talk about news first and then we can dive into uh, some charts here uh interesting they're asking to sign up here i usually just use the free version crypto panic is a good news aggregator and by the way let me just pull up the chat here if you guys do have any questions and again please do take that market survey for us just takes a few minutes and uh, we may share the results, by the way, some really interesting, although not surprising 
responses coming in from that. All right, ETH withdrawals flatline. Meme coins drive ETH burn rates higher. Nothing really newsworthy there. The uh, Bitcoin flash rally briefly pushed Bitcoin derivatives. Uh, interesting. About 56K in Bitfinex. Not, how, not sure how to unpack that. That doesn't really mean anything in the short term. Does not mean we're going to go to 56K. But it um, looks like the futures uh, had uh, had some activity there. Let's see. Coinbase execs. Interesting. Well, it, this is interesting because uh, we had recently marketed a very cool software that uh, one of my old programmers that uh, helped emigrate to the U.S. in 2010 uh, created and which searches for and finds unusual insider trading. Now, um, they can. Let's unpack this for a minute because I told you guys, I showed you, I showed you examples how Brian Anderson and the uh, C-level execs at Coinbase were dumping lots of Coinbase starting in December. Now, they did it legally and they posted it on the, uh, filled out the required forms, but still they were dumping millions of shares of Coinbase right up into and before the Wells notice from the SEC. So we may want to look at uh, Coinbase stock, but this is um, new. I haven't seen this. But I, uh, I was wondering about this intrider trading and all right, I'm sorry. Well, this I read too fast. This was days after going public and that was not related to the uh, shares they were dumping here earlier this year. Uh, let's see, but would open the door to in additional charges, I guess, if they I see that's the thing with insider trading, they they can do they can sell their shares. If they're officers of the company, they just have to disclose it publicly. And there are forms for that. And so let's see, Andreessen Horowitz, Armstrong, 2090. The question is when before they announce negative news that sent the price tumbling? Well, you know, this is this is the thing, though. Uh they can disclose it and sell it, but the reasons are if they sell it because they know negative news is coming. So here's the question, and you heard it here first. If later they expand this lawsuit for if they if they can prove that Brian Anderson and the Coinbase execs knew that or had a heads up that the SEC was about to file a Wells notice, because if we have time, I'll pull that up. And I'll show you exactly. I've got a screenshot somewhere showing how they were dumping millions of shares of Coinbase. Now, executives typically will be on a vesting schedule. They'll sell a certain amount of shares on a regular basis. But this showed it, it clearly ramped up, including the CFO and, and uh, the uh, some of the C-level execs dumping a lot of Coinbase stocks. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but... Um, yeah, this is very interesting. And, um, and here, Coinbase executives have a long-standing tradition of dumping huge amounts of stock. So, and here, okay, just as I was saying, at the end of March, Protoss reported execs have sold nine times more stock than they bought in 2023 so far, as of March 23. See, I, okay, now I'm gonna have to pull it up and show you this, but I might take a minute to pull it up. Uh, maybe we'll do that at the end. So it's half a million shares, 26 million uh this no i think it's more than this i'm seeing i was seeing three million shares maybe it's uh the data is skewed but uh let's see yeah i mean three three okay three hundred thousand shares i was seeing some indications of that but going right up right up until march when the uh, sec wells notice came in so anyway uh coinbase insider trading sounds familiar Okay, so we're going to want to look at some Coinbase shares and all of this, the uh, uh, regulatory concerns. Yeah, all of this is sort of contributing to regulatory concerns, not just for Coinbase, for all of crypto. And that undoubtedly, in my opinion, is the biggest impact on price right now. The latest bank failure, certainly First Republic, you know, we want to take a look at that. Uh, that was now the second biggest bank failure, and that probably pushes Silicon Valley Bank down to the third. But, um, you know, the I saw an article recently where I basically said, don't worry about this. Uh, bank failures, there's nothing new. In fact, I posted that in our active trader group. So those of you that are in that uh, saw that article, maybe in my other screen here, I'm going to go ahead and pull that up here. Everything's running a little bit slowly. Let's see, getting an active alert. Let's uh, jump over and see where uh, which screen that is. And... 
I got too many windows open, you guys. Sorry, let's get back to that here. Uh, we'll jump on to, let me just see what alert did we just have? Uh, no big deal. Okay, TSI, that's something else I watch for shorting and day trading. Okay, so basically, crack and balance, doing cheap on the dark. Coinbase, we talked about that. And over on this screen here, trying to keep this moving along quickly, but it's a fluid live class. So that's why uh, it's taking a little longer, but my computer is running a little bit slow with all this data and all these uh, screens open. So I'll pull that up, that article about so why we don't have to worry so much about the bank failures. And uh, although this is an interesting article that we was, was posted here in the M3 group, should touch on that. So we've got the debt, you know, the Dexis as soon as June saying and Janet Yellen saying basically, you know, we may run out of money. We've seen this song and dance before. And um you know, so they're saying is that we would be unable to continue to satisfy all of government's obligations by early June. Great, stop spending so much money is the answer. And so if, but here's the key, if Congress does not raise or suspend the debt limit for that time, uh, we, you know, we've seen this over and over again. There's always a big song and dance and they always raise the debt ceiling. So this overall is a bit of a scary thing that leads to the bigger narrative of do we have a de-dollarization of the dollar and uh, do we ultimately move towards a digital dollar and just wipe out all of our debt but this is a scary and ominous chart here and uh the debt limit the legal debt limit 31 trillion guys just remember just recently it was at 17 trillion and so uh this is uh this is not uh, a good trajectory and i'm not sure how this plays out now this does question is does this play and portray a better case for Bitcoin. I don't know. I think this is a very complex, complex scenario. But you know, this with interest rates rising, it creates an interesting dilemma, though, doesn't it? Because the consensus is that uh, they raise rates here this week. All eyes are on the Fed and raising rates here. I'm just not sure if it's this week, this month for sure. But um, they, uh, you know, they probably will raise one or two more times. But by doing so, they're making the cost of our own debt more expensive. And this trajectory going vertical, something, something's got to break here. I guess that's the biggest thing that's worrying me. Our charts are telling us one thing. Yeah, we've been through four cycles now. We're going into the fourth cycle, and it hasn't been wrong. But this is the first time we've seen this level of really of going vertical. 2000s, 2008, we've had that slope before. But uh, let's see, we were, we've were we doubled our, our debt since, let's say, 2012. So in 10 years, we've doubled the debt. And prior to that, where were we at eight trillion? It uh, was well, you know, it's all it's almost like every ten years, not quite about that. Well, anyway, but this certainly a scary graphic here. We'll have to see how that plays out. And um, let's see, what's this last headline? Fed and FDIC, we weren't forceful enough before SVB and Signature Bank failures. Okay, so that's interesting. Let's take a look at that. And while we're not to get through the news as fast as we can. If you guys have anything you want to unpack, let me know. And um, let's see, here is this. It's a little bit smaller. So this is something, again, in our M3 Active Trader class that uh, we, I posted in the chat, the chat there. So basically, this person saying, don't be too scared about this. I don't know who Bernstein is. Let's see. Basically, he says, when the sky is falling and doom looms on the horizon, maybe time so we can get this a little bigger for you guys, to um, his chief investment strategist at Merrill Lynch, uh, former chief investment strategist, and uh, says, don't get caught in the constant, uh, how to say consistent, constant hyperbole and listen to the chicken littles who decry. The end of banking, end of capitalism, and the end of almost anything, he says, bank failure is unsettling, but not unusual. So... That, that's kind of the end of it. That's not reality. This isn't the first banking crisis and it won't be the last. So what are we doing? We're forming an overall kind of thesis on what's going on. What do we pay attention to? What's important? And uh, this also here, uh, stocks were higher as of yesterday. 
And let's see, so the article is a little bit older, actually, but uh, everything's turning to the Fed. So we want to keep an eye out for the next FOMC. Coming up, we can pull up the calendar and uh, look at that, too. Let's see, what are we saying here? We're enforceable enough to four SVP signature bank failures and split blame. Sure. Okay, so let's see. Are they going to talk about this newest failure? It's not clear what the point of this article is, other than to point fingers. Crucial week ahead. Let's see, panic, <clears throat> and uh, not a whole lot. Uh, story continues. Sure. The questions, press conference. All right, um, not not a whole lot there that I want to get into. So again, we're trying to just skim the headlines, go through things to see what may be on the horizon, and we can take a look at this here. What the talking heads are saying about the recent bump in price here. We'll let that load and come back. And let's see, uh, Tim Pool dropping dollar for Bitcoin. Let's see, nothing uh, earth crashing or earth shattering, rather. And so we've got, uh, let's look at this. Okay. There's Bitcoin. A lot of these headlines, as you already know, are, are clickbait and. Uh, and uh, don't really have a lot of content. They're just trying to get clicks and sell advertising. See, so regulators facilitated the deal. Bank of Titan, J.P. Morgan to buy failing lender First Republic. Okay, so Federal Reserve expected to announce quarter point interest rate hike after meeting Wednesday. So it is this week. And, um, you know, I hate to, to speculate, but what if they raise a half a point? We'll certainly send uh, crypto lower, but uh, we always helpful to have that what if scenario in our minds. So spike in Bitcoin in uh, response to the uncertainty surrounding traditional banking system. Yeah, I mean, Bitcoin was created for this specific reason back and right after the 2008 banking crisis. So as investors seek alternative uh, investment assets to hedge against potential economic volatility, as this says right here. And as the market grapples with uh, implications, JP, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, and no idea who this person is. All right. Let's see. Arthur Hayes, Pepe coin futures listed on major exchanges uh, as Arthur Hayes proclaims froggy time. That's not really news, but kind of funny. And um, so we can put that away. And let's see. What did it say? Spot trading volume plunged more than 65%. Yeah, that's interesting. Volume, really, though, breakouts usually happen, though. Um, right around, oops, I want to get back to this low volume when people have apathy and are sort of walking away, not looking at it. So this is interesting. Spot trading volume plunge more than 65% in April as Binance added back fees. Interesting. Turn off all these pop-ups here. Okay. So, I mean, that, my overall thesis is we pull back in May, but, uh, the, um, and we push higher June, July, but it's, uh, you know, we new information equals new decision. We want to see what, uh, what it actually does. All right. So let me do this. I'm going to put the, the crypto panic away. And let's see. Do you guys have any questions before we dive into the charts? And I'm going to pull up uh, one more source here for... News daily hodl is a good one. What do you guys watch? What kind of news do you guys watch? Because uh, I Emma, we are gonna we're gonna be doing some stuff with some things with looks like Coin Telegraph or one of their parties there. Uh, and so I want to show you a new news aggregator that looks pretty cool. But I have to pull that out. This is daily hodl. DeFi could erupt 100x next 10 years. So um, that's interesting, you know, but this doesn't make mean this is going to be imminent. Bitcoin price destined for $1 million following, for, for, okay, Arthur Hayes is a smart guy. Uh, although, yeah, uh, he's, uh, of course, the uh, Bitcoin billionaire founder of BitMEX. Some, uh, I was, uh, I think I shared with you guys in Active Trader, though, some articles about, you know, they were accused of, making most of their money by liquidating their own traders. And uh, that seems to be the model for overseas margin derivative trading platforms. 
like uh, Bybit and BitGet from personal experience, my opinion only. Let's see, 500, uh, wow, 500 billion dollar loss in one sector will wipe out more regional banks, says Kevin O'Leary. Um, that's worth noting. Certainly, um, the banking sector, and I did post something in there also um, yesterday in Active Trader, basically somebody saying that this is not over in the banking sector, but so it's, it's a tough one. Is it being absorbed and anticipated or is there more contagion that takes the market lower? Trader called 2023 crypto turnaround warns Bitcoin. Um, I mean, skillfully row the 22. Well, we did that, you guys, in active traders. So anyway, uh, let's see. BRICS currency underway. Nations push to ban in dollar. So we'll skim over that. And the uh, latest with Balaji from the former Coinbase CTO who had his million dollar Bitcoin bet. He's not backtracking. Okay. Well, uh, okay. So maybe his bet is based on, uh, based on sorry, the default of the dollar. Can you imagine if that happened and Bitcoin suddenly went straight? It's got a long way to get to a million dollar Bitcoin, though. I don't think anyone, we've talked about this, I don't think anyone expects it to actually hit a million dollars. I think Balaji has enough Bitcoin that if it rockets to 100,000, based on the catalyst of his debt, he's going to make multiple millions and, and no, he, everyone wins. Tech mogul Jack Dorsey's Bitcoin company blow, sorry, block, buys up hardware. Okay. Uh, yeah, so Ray Dalio, uh, is, um, he's had some very prescient comments in his video that's on uh, Netflix, and I keep forgetting the name of it, but it's excellent talking about how uh, the dollar... It will all sort of uh, inevitably fall in the, the yuan take over as the reserve currency. And he's been saying that for a year. But um, he's also had some pretty uh, ominous comments lately about these markets. But uh, this is interesting. Uh, Ray Dalio predicts government will turn on the money printers back to fund the national deficit. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. That's new information. Certainly interesting there. That could push higher. I mean, as we know, when the money, money printers turn on, the uh, Bitcoin goes up. That was what we saw in 2021. The question is, I want to know, does, does Ray Dalio give a uh, the timeline on that? That would be uh, good to know. So uh, getting really scared for the bulls, clings to 28,000. Look, this is nonsense. We're going to pull back and push higher, uh, I think, and uh, the charts are telling us that. So at any rate, Oh, well, this is also good here. I, I want to put the news away, but this is interesting information. So um, representatives are in Congress wanting to discuss clear rules for crypto, AK regulation. So it's coming. It's just a matter of how fast. And uh, U.S. government sells $300 billion in assets to J.P. Morgan, right? We talked about that. So that's about it. Let's see, Aptos, Bull Run. Who's this uh, doubling down on contrarian prediction? The bull run is underway. Well, it started the first phase of it. It's just we have not, we're not close to the um, parabolic phase. That's probably next year. And uh, if you uh, if you follow uh, our friend Max Wright at the Contrarian Dude on YouTube, he has a great interview today with a guest named Juan where they talk about market cycles. And um, and I would encourage you guys to watch that. That's uh, you guys know how to find that, and um, just contrarian dude, good article. I, I post TA videos there as well on occasion, and uh, so you know that uh, that's covered extensively. It's a good, it's a good uh, video. I, I suggest going to watch it. So we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. We're diving in, into the news too much there, but just enough, I'd say. Bitcoin price destined for a million dollars. Following First Republic Collapse, Arthur Hayes, Arthur Hayes, smart guy. Uh, Mike and I um, enjoy reading his articles, sometimes share those. So it seems like the Fed still wants to raise 25 basis points this week. They still don't get it. He says maybe they do or just hoping and praying the market is <laughs> stupid. Doesn't matter. A rate hike almost guarantees another non-too-big-to-fail bank will bite the dust this week. Okay, we've got some more alerts going off. First Republic has a loan book full of jumbo mortgages. This is interesting. Made to rich people at low rates that are now worth way less 
Uh, after interest rates rose. Hmm, yeah, makes sense. So next bank maybe to fail this week. We'll have a loan book full of illiquid large commercial real estate loans. You know, that is the other shoe that could drop here. And uh, we talked about that a little bit while back and just it never arose, but commercial real estate loans. So, and just a sidebar for a minute, uh, there's an interesting theory and uh, video on YouTube as well. Uh, there's some good information on YouTube. You know, people are negative on the YouTubers, but some of these are, are very well thought out. And the, um, the evidence suggests that the 2008 financial crisis was not caused by the um the loan uh, crisis or the uh what's the right word the um uh, i'm drawing a blank the um subprime mortgages sorry so they're saying that it was actually caused by just an over preponderance of of speculation just way rampant speculation in real estate investments and so they uh they're seeing a bigger uh, amount of that now so we could be on the verge of another real estate crisis and uh, so, you know, the question is, my my sense is that that would trigger a push in Bitcoin and uh, truly scarce assets, gold and Bitcoin money to people abandoning, getting out of real estate, putting it into Bitcoin. Um, well, shoot. OK, so now I now just sort of stole my own thunder. I didn't read that yet. Maybe my subconscious picked that up because I was just pontificating here. But the crisis in the banking sector trigger macroeconomic turmoil that could help springboard Bitcoin to Bitcoin uh, 1 million. Yeah, that's what I was saying or speculating. And um, but he's made numerous Bitcoin million dollar Bitcoin predictions before. So uh, similarly, and uh, as an aside, uh, we uh, I saw I was at Bitcoin 2022 last year. By the way, if any of you are going to be there this year, I'll be there. Uh, Max Wright will be there and uh, let us know. Been great to meet you guys. And you can put that in the comments down below. But um, the I was second row when Michael Saylor and Kathy Wood were having a great discussion about this. And Kathy says she believes Bitcoin will hit a million dollars by 2030. And um, that's certainly possible. Um, even if we only get halfway there, very interesting. And the aside is, this is an unofficial announcement, everyone, that we are going to be hosting a huge Bitcoin virtual summit. And that's probably a June, July timeframe. And we're going to have some great speakers. And I am hoping we can get uh, Mr. Saylor to join us. I have some mutual friends, so we'll see. Uh, I was actually talking to the former president uh, in person uh, of uh, MicroStrategy um, this weekend and um, had a uh, good conversation with him. Um, at any rate, uh, continuing on, let's see. So he's doing some sell-side research of his own, showing the banks with the largest CRE portfolio. It's very smart, actually, to uh, possibly put on some put positions, maybe some put spreads or uh, short. He's saying take a hard look at 50 to 75% out of the money, short dated puts on these banks to be purchased after the Fed meetings. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that that's a writer downer. I'm going to screenshot that because that's, uh, that's an interesting position. You know, that's a lottery ticket, you guys. If you ever watch the big short, uh, now's your chance to be sort of the big mini short too. And maybe layer on some uh, puts or put spreads. Uh, we're going to be keeping an eye on that here uh, in our vertical returns classes. So at any rate, uh, and but as I mentioned, Hayes has a controversial career. Here we have the former BitMEX CEO and Hayes pled guilty to violating Bank Secrecy Act. Uh, and he failing to establish anti-money laundering protocols. And, you know, that's, you know, the real the real sort of dirt is that uh, bitmex may have been sort of targeting and trading against their own traders and uh profiting off liquidating those uh, i think that's again i think that happens more often than not in these offshore hong kong based singapore based margin trading firms so be careful you guys uh, that's why we don't you don't see us out there promoting the buy bits and bit gets of the world I will say as a quick uh, prop to Gemini, Gemini is in the process of creating their own derivatives exchange offshore. I would trust those guys. And, um, so, you know, they've been burned enough times. They know how it feels. And so uh, I'll be uh, looking towards uh, forward to that. 
But question is, will we be able to use it with all these laws apparently aimed at VPNs because of air quotes TikTok? But really, they don't want all of us trading margin and um and offshore and i think there's there's some good lessons for that specifically because of these nefarious actors uh you know in all fairness if you're in the us a uh, great country and um you know we should be paying our taxes uh, a controversial comment there but you know it hurts us all if these other companies are wiping the board clean with all of our money and therefore therein are uh, not putting it toward the our country you know so not to get into a nationalistic bend here but, um, you know, I would uh, prefer to make a lot more money and pay taxes here versus getting it uh, wiped clean by uh, overseas uh, margin trading liquidations and things. I had a fairly, fairly sizable and painful loss last year. It happens. But uh, uh, my call was right. I was the right direction. Uh, market manipulation moved the markets into a short squeeze. And so there you go. That's trading for you. But uh, anyway, there's more to unpack here, more layers of that onion we won't get into. But at any rate, uh, let's talk about the news negotiations on the BRICS currency underway as nations push to abandon the dollar. So, you know, some people are saying there's no way we're going to lose the dollar reserve status. Um, the, 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 the momentum is there and we're heading toward a certainly a new world. So, um, yeah, that uh, top Russian lawmaker says so China and China and, and um, Russia have, it's been known for some time, they've been working on a gold back competitor for the US dollar and the BRICS nations, of course, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, more or more are joining uh, willingly and eagerly. So, you know, this is a uh, certainly a threat. They are starting to settle oil purchases in the yuan and some sizable ones. So it's starting to happen. And so it may just be there's two world currencies. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they share it. It's, it's too early to tell how this will affect us. So, but they are certainly pushing toward that to create an alternative currency that would circumvent the USD. Now, circumvent is a scary word. You know, we have gotten a lot of um, benefits out of being the world reserve currency. And as history has shown us, again, watch that Ray Dalio show on uh, the, the cycles of the... Um, if you, if any of you know it, what is the name? I, I just, I've, I've seen it a hundred times. It's got a cool graphic, but I can't think of the name. But uh, he talks about, you know, first it was the Dutch Gilder, then it made way to the British pound, and then we took over as a world reserve currency. But every time a country has lost the world reserve currency, it really has uh, negatively impacted their economy. So. You know, certainly we're going to fight hard for uh, for that. And, um, you know, hopefully in the end, uh, Satoshi is the CIA and we uh, we win. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see. Because uh, Satoshi's wallet of a million Bitcoin at some point, you know, it's going to be worth a lot. Anyway, who knows? Uh, let's see. But uh, he says American sanctions have gone too far. Well, don't invade Ukraine, but uh, politicizing the dollar, triggering a movement away. This is, I mean, this is probably, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if this wasn't the play all along. Hmm. Time to put on our tin hats, everybody, because what other way could they guarantee sanctions other than to invade Ukraine so that they could then say, well, you guys are politicizing the dollar. Therefore, we're going to pull away. I don't know. I think they had their own reasons for invading Ukraine. But at any rate, um, let's see. U.S. is undermining the foundations of its dominance by linking its economy to currency politics. Okay. So where are we time-wise? We're a little bit long on the news here. I think we should get to the charts here. But uh, so let's just skim over this. I want to touch on Balaji's uh, not backtracking massive Bitcoin bet. So basically the reasons why... If you haven't heard, you can Google this. Uh, Balaji, former CTO of Coinbase, did a million dollar bet that Bitcoin would hit a million dollars by 90 days. We're probably 60 days remaining on that. So yeah, he did that in March. Uh, so maybe a little, maybe halfway there. Bitcoin reached $1 million within three months, largely due to failing banks and for a hyperinflation. hyperinflation. Sorry, guys, I'm reading fast to get through this. Uh, he previously said the bank runs will happen much faster, considering we're living in a digital world. Um, wow, this is amazing. I think we'll see an exit from the U.S. banking system. Now, this is already happening. Part of the rally we've seen in Bitcoin has been retail driven, not institutionals. So people taking their money out of the banks. So this is to some degree started. 
towards Bitcoin over the next weeks and months, perhaps years to come. Exact timeline. So here he's sort of backtracking a little bit, doesn't think it's impossible. But uh, timing is hard, prepping is easy. He's trying to be the catalyst here, I think. Because why? Well, he owns a lot of Bitcoin, you can only surmise. So at any rate, uh, yeah, so many interpreted the bet as more of a statement of publicity stunt. Uh, so let's see, 10% chance fiat crisis happens in months, 70% in years. So, okay, 10% is high enough. It's a non-zero chance worth drawing attention to. There you go. That's what I was saying. And at least he'll be known as the guy who called it if it happens. Why not? So at any rate, uh, others also believe the probability of sovereign debt default is at all-time highs. Scary thought. Uh, that would certainly plummet this into a much deeper economic crisis here. But what would that? What would the result be of that money printing? And we know what happens when money prints. So tough interesting times you know uh you know wouldn't be a bad time have everyone should have some bitcoin and just dollar cost average not financial advice but over time that's been shown to be the best strategy and so by the way if you're watching the replay on this on our youtube channel uh go ahead and like this subscribe we're gonna keep we're gonna start doing some live sessions here soon so if you like what we're covering here just go ahead and give us a subscribe and a like see price credits weren't so we're getting into the weeds here a little bit here all right uh next uh we talked about Ray Dalio a little bit U.S government will turn money printers back on to fund the national deficit interesting well you know I mean that may be the only alternative if we have if we can't if they don't raise the debt ceiling then we may have to turn on the money money printers Ray Dalio is a smart guy I I like um you know he's got good material well thought out and uh, he's not out to have publicity. He's out to, to give back. You can tell he's an older gentleman. Done very, very well. And uh, his his interests are in the right place. So, um, uh, by the way, I'm heading down to Miami next week for a fund launch uh, pro uh, promo that um, or live event and um, to see Jim Rogers speak. He's also another smart guy. And I've been doing this a long time. I recommend both of these guys to listen to what they have to say. So uh, let's see, a recent interview, uh, Dalio says government likely resort to currency debasement to partially pay off its immense 31.45 trillion national debt. Well, you know, that leads to inflation, obviously. So not sure how that plays out. But a uh, fresh round of fiscal stimulus to jumpstart the economy and keep the U.S. from defaulting. Um, you know, uh, that there's more to unpack here on the brink of collapse. All right, always cheerful. Uh, maybe go watch that. I there's just keep in mind, don't get too far into the weeds. We've always survived, and so although that's a scary uh consensus, if we're all kicking back saying yeah, it'll be fine, that's usually when it's not fine. But uh, do realize that this is not Dalio's video, it's this person here, and uh, it's a little bit of clickbait to get the click. You guys know that. All right, last news article, historic Bitcoin bull run underway. It says popular crypto analysts, I bet you have never heard of them. And uh, yeah, so popular, no idea who this is. So um, let's see, uh, edema, regular EMA, what is this? Uh, so the double exponential moving average, that's a new one. Anyway, um, we're going to look at our indicators. Let's not pay attention to this because... I have a high degree of faith and confidence in uh, ours. So let's hop over here and let's see. We've got another message here. Okay. What's this link, Jay? Is that the. Yeah, that that's that's Max's uh, our, uh, video from today. Uh, contrary and dude. Uh, can, again, I do videos here as, on occasion as well. But uh, go watch that. Uh, that's a good one. And uh, do some cool things here. That was mine. I do occasional things here, as you can see. All right. Let's get to the charts, you guys. Uh, in terms of where things are, uh, the DXY, we'd be keeping an eye on this. We've got a push up on the DXY, which would explain the pullback in Bitcoin. Kind of a bottoming pattern here. We're still in kind of rally zone. If the DXY pushes up higher, though, and gets up to this 104 region, we are going to see a deeper pullback. And so... What we want to keep an eye on is this sort of zone here when I'm looking at on this. Let me open it up so you can see it a bit more. And we'll look at this trading channel that uh, would ostensibly 
So it's broken out of this downward channel. But as we know, these do widen. The question is, is it in a new upward trending channel? And uh, so back over here, DXY had a pretty fairly wide uh, trend channel there. Question is, is this part of the same trend channel? Or so we need to see where we kind of close for the day. But uh, it does look like it's pushing up. So if it is pushing up here, and let's see... We have, I don't have my indicators on this chart here, but uh, it certainly could push up higher in this 100 range before it hits any resistance. And um, kind of a little inverse head and shoulders here, not probably strong enough to see some follow through. We'll keep an eye on that. And uh, so let's see, that's something else here. All right. So big thing here we already talked about on the monthly basis. I do expect a pullback here into this range. And uh, we don't have a bearish ERI, so we are still in a bullish run. This is a bullish, sorry, bearish correction in a uh, a bullish move. The uh, overall macro cycle, it's hard to say. You know, I do believe we're in the early stages of the next bull cycle. But uh, what I'm looking for is a pullback here to this 25.5 region and then a push up to that 50K region, 48K to 50K. That's the uh, Fibonacci golden pocket retracement here. And uh, it doesn't mean it has to happen. But more than likely, we've seen that happen over and over again. That's what I'm seeing from here. We'd likely see a pullback and maybe a deeper pullback down into this uh, 40, 37,000 region back in here before shooting higher. And if any of those scenarios do play out, then, um, you know, maybe we do see Bitcoin 100,000 by summertime. Uh, I've got a chart in here that shows the possibility of that. Uh, the biggest thing I want to look at here, what's, what's interesting here, I don't know how we got on the daily However, this should be a, a weekly chart, actually a monthly chart. So yeah, so the biggest bullish thing too, or adding to the bullish scenario is this uh, MACD also gave us the signals when it was time to get out back on the uh, November up here at the peak and in January of 2022, when I was telling people to get out. We are close to seeing a cross here, but it's slowing down a bit. And uh, so we want to keep an eye on that. I think, again, May slows down, may even see a little bit of pullback and then push through in June, July. That's my best guess. All right. So uh, what else do we see here? Back on, We're on a five-day. Let me just get to a weekly on that. Again, with Bitcoin's chart, open this up. We'll look at some of our indicators, and then we'll get to some daily charts here. Again, I think a pullback is likely into this pullback zone around that 25.5, and then we see a bounce, and we see this thing kind of push higher. I'll move that over a bit. But uh, that is what I'm anticipating. I'll get rid of this uh, here. That's no longer what I'm thinking. However, actually, let me undo that. Sorry, I know why that was there. So the possibility of a head and shoulders here, though, is is also real and what we want to keep an eye on so that uh, if we instead sort of pull down into this lower region, I'll move that over as well. And we come down to that 20 below that 25.5 range and get into this region, we have that possibility for head and shoulders retracement. And uh, just doing some quick math, if that puts the uh, quick charting here, if we have that as the neckline, and if this is the head, you know, potentially we could see if that were to play out back down into the 14,000 range. I don't think that's going to happen, but we'll have to keep that in mind and see what we see as we get closer. Okay, so um, on the weekly basis, though, on our trend strength indicator, our TSI, are seeing a bearish pullback here. So we'll wait for a weekly confirmation below 80 and uh, or if we bounce up higher. But we are, I've been saying this for weeks, we are overbought here, we're due for a pullback. And then I have this 60 line drawn. We bounce off of this back in September of 2020. So, you know, we certainly could see a bounce and push higher off that. We'll be keeping an eye on that there. These other charts we'll dive into more detail on uh, tomorrow's class here in Active Trader. So this class is uh, really focused on the um, indicators, crypto mastery indicators. Here's that chart, though, with the uh, case for 100K Bitcoin uh, based on this fractional pattern from over here that, uh, you know, if we did see a rapid rise, it's following this fractal very closely. It's a little pulls back. If we pull back into that 26,000 range, you know, we could shoot up much we could shoot up right past that uh golden pocket and up into this 100k range anything's possible as we know with bitcoin and uh maybe redraw this a bit because you know we'll see what happens so i'll leave that on actually i'm going to push it up so it overlays a little closer to where we have down this range but uh that's the case for 100k bitcoin here and even uh, higher up into these other ranges uh, later on as we go 
So um, I'll have to keep an eye on that also. So uh, let's see. Oh, the dollar is jump. Sorry, the daily, not the dollar. Let's jump to the daily. Daily is a bit oversold on this. We have a bearish ERI early reverse indicator our radar is mostly green but on the weekly a little bit it's looking bearish here so uh, what i'd be looking for here is uh, signs of strength and another bullish eri remember the eri that confirms with the tsi going over 20 those are our strongest signals and so if we we want to see a break above this 20 line for confirmation last time we saw it was back here and of course we had that nice push higher and rally all the way up into this zone. So the ERI, TSI are the first two things we look for. And the third element, the three kings, is the signal line going green. Again, we just saw that on the monthly chart. And the four horsemen, as we call them, are the all three of these, plus our key and a bell, with the midline going green on the trend indicators. So uh, if you're new to this and watching the replay and would like to get more information about our proprietary indicators, you can go to cryptomastery.online. Uh, here again, the bell, the key alerts us to when it's a good time to get in the markets. The bell is the buy, take profits on the bag of money here. And then we follow for an additional cycle here. And uh, we've seen several cycles play out. The bag of money called it perfectly here, selling. This is Ethereum selling uh, back in April on a uh, daily basis uh, on April 18th. So perfect. And uh, let's take a look at Bitcoin here as well and uh see what's going on there let's see just checking the comments here don't see anything up there so we've got so we've got the bearish eri on the bitcoin daily so clearly not a buy signal so our just the bottom line is we're waiting and watching for a bullish eri and then a bullish tsi so we're kind of in the mid zone it's turning red this is all red so there's nothing bullish about things right now in the markets and I would not be taking long positions okay and so what I'm also going to do you guys is I'm going to pull up the uh, trader success check checklist and if you don't have that yet you can drop a comment below and we'll get that over to you and uh let's see there's several versions of that so let me see if you can find the one for uh, the crypto mastery but um if you guys have any questions let me know and uh, let's see it's loading real slow today so all right so if, if you'd like this this is the our m3 crypto uh, trader success checklist and uh we have one for crypto mastery as well it's the same thing but uh basically it tells you when to get in the trades so this is something you put together so if you have three or four of these that's generally enough to take a trade if you're not using this make sure that you are because it is the roadmap to trading success of, as we've found so eri that early reversal indicator are there multiple green arrows in a row so more than one is better so i'm always looking for that secondary confirmation one and also the confirmation of the tsi going above the 20 line if you can see that i'll zoom in on that a little bit so these two together highly correlative for an extended move in either direction the inverse of that would be a red bearish ERI and then dropping down below the 80 line, kind of like a stochastics. And then also has the signal line turn from red to green. That signal line, the three kings right here. If you have those three, it's it's a bullish entry. It's a bullish entry signal. And then certainly if you can add the Abel, the four horsemen, as I talked about, and almost always that would also have a green midline so these are the crypto mastery indicators by themselves and um, you can add in other things to en enhance your success in the trade is our bullish engulfing candle pattern is it out of support and rising above 21 and 50 period emas is there a support and rising trend line so basic stuff you guys but uh very powerful and certainly our volatility index is another one of our indicators that really adds to that uh, and so, and our favorite on the uh, M3, the uh, other signal, the rocket candle, we're not going to talk about that today, but those are our advanced setups. You can find out more about that at uh, moonstream.io slash M3 for our advanced M3 training, which includes all these indicators. So, all right. Anything uh, that you guys want to look at here, we can run down some other scenarios. Let me get back to a daily chart. Uh, let me jump to a four hour, one hour not a whole lot going on. We see a lot of buying and selling 
Um, on the four hour, I see bullish. Uh, do we have an ERI? We do. So I can open this up and uh, we can see these buy sell zones here, these order blocks. So it's really sandwiched, price is sandwiched into a lot of buying and selling pressure. I'll turn that off here for a minute and let's expand this on the four hour to give us some signals. But again, on the daily, I don't think it's bullish. We don't want to be getting into this market here. We could, could see a short term push higher, but what do we have? We have kind of a symmetrical triangle forming, right? So in this case, it's going to break one way or the other and could see a push higher. We'd be looking for a breakout, but I don't know. We have don't have enough signals on the four hour. We have that TSI break in that 20 line, very bullish on the four hour. So we could push up into this back up to the 29,000 range, but probably zigzag around in here and then break down again. I think that's more than likely. That's what we see. So, you know, sort of zigzag. And then we come down to those 25.5 level. And then hopefully that'll be a bottom on the daily. And we see that kind of rise back up. Uh, this is Ethereum. I'll just go through it since it's up and then we'll jump to Bitcoin on the daily. And uh, again, that scenario, uh, you know, coming back, I had suggested Ethereum come back in this zone and it and we might hold here. I am holding some Ethereum. Uh, my stop losses are right in these regions here where I would get out and look to re-enter in this green triangle down below. So yeah, we are using these trades setups here, stop losses and targets. But uh, let's... So that's what I'm seeing, but the the bullish case has been sort of negated here by TSI turning red. It's hoping to see a break above the 20 line, but as we know, everything follows Bitcoin. So let's look at Bitcoin. We'll take a quick look at uh, the the overall market indices and see what they look like. But as of now, we Bitcoin's in this range that uh, I had drawn weeks ago. This resistance range because we saw. Back back in this May 2022 range, a lot of consolidation, so it's no surprise that we're seeing some profit taking in this range. And again, that possibility of the head and shoulders forming. We, you know, we kind of in this in this shot we see this head and shoulders and this uh, lower highs, these lower highs. So it does look like we come back down and see some lower pricing in here, although we see some support in this 26 to 27,000 range. Regardless, I'm not trading on support zones. We are trading on our indicators. So we want to wait for a bullish ERI, a bullish TSI. We, uh, we briefly had this signal go green. So we tried. It tried to break out here. It had a nice little pump rally, but uh, it's not quite there yet. So needs to regroup and consolidate a bit more and again that could be down into this 25,500 range that uh and the reason for that is remember back here we pushed up here it was resistance resistance and resistance finally flipped as support it's been a key area for some time if we extend that level out here i know there's a lot on this chart but you can see there's been a lot of instances where that was re resistance here so uh, the fact that it was such a strong resistance that flipped as uh, flipped over in the bullish territory, it has not really retested that 25.5, 25.3 is a real number. I'm going to set an alert. This would be where I'll be looking for buying opportunities. I would recommend me doing the same to start uh, in that 25.3 region, looking for uh, bullish re-entries using the Crypto Mastery indicators again. And uh, so that's what uh, we wanted to look at. Let's see, Bitcoin miners surpass 50 billion in total revenue the miners are you know they're mining again so that's good and uh bitcoin's largest public holder that would be a micro strategy i believe earns profits from its btc stash yep bingo and so you know michael saylor's been right in the end he's going to i believe be seen as the uh the hero who was right and didn't cave uh in that that speech he did where I was with, I was there, second row, Kathy Wood and Michael Saylor standing right in front of me. Saylor got up and shook his hand at the audience and said, do not sell your Bitcoin. And uh, a lot of people were worried he'd be liquidated. Um, you know, that was really not uh, going to happen. But, you know, this guy has uh, brass ones, you know, that he's been buying, buying more. In the end, there's also speculation. I saw an article recently. They could become the wealthiest company in the world because of their uh, holdings. And if 
you know, MicroStrategy has also become surrogate for Bitcoin. Uh, and, um, you know, at least the stock market's regulated, although uh, they can't control the sell-off if Bitcoin goes down. At any rate, uh, if you're not yet trading Bitcoin and just tiptoeing around this, you might want to consider MicroStrategy. Again, I'm not a financial advisor, uh, but I do play one on TV. No, do your own research and... Um, and uh, I would recommend doing that. That's um, that may be the play. Also, Bitcoin ETFs. Uh, there aren't BTF ETFs on the spot, but you can buy um, the Bitto and the uh, BITI, the puts. On uh, you can buy derivatives on these. And uh, so very very thinly traded markets. So be careful. In fact, don't recommend that unless you really know what you're doing. And uh, guys, we're right up on the hour here for the class. If anyone has any questions, uh, let me know. But uh, that's what we'll be looking for. We could jump over and just see if there's any movement. Oh, I did say, let's look at Bitcoin dominance quickly. And then also want to look at the um, overall market cap. Now, Bitcoin dominance is in an overbought area. And I had drawn this uh, weeks ago. So sure enough, this thing had kind of pulled back. And we might see a break above on Bitcoin dominance and then come back and test. But as of now, it's rejecting. So uh, we'll see. We could see a pullback on a Bitcoin dominance. ETH dominance has been, yeah, ETH. Let's look at this. We'll we'll unpack this more tomorrow in the M3 Active Trader class. But it's it does seem that ETH dominance is breaking this long-standing trend. Let me turn off this ERI. It's not as relevant on these broader market indexes and dominance calculations. But ETH dominance has been flatlining for a year now. And uh, while it's still technically in this upward trend channel, it looks like it may be falling, may fall out of it. Uh, I, I hate to keep widening this channel. It's it, it's uh, it's not looking good here. So I think Bitcoin leads the next market rally. Uh, for a while, I thought it might be Ethereum. Let's see some news. Ethereum whales go on a massive sell-off. Okay, why would that be? Let's see, inflows of 505 million on Binance. All right, well, that's usually... Uh, the, the whale selling. I wonder why. Ethereum has been trading well below community expectations since. Well, we talked about that before the upgrade, that it would likely be a sell on the news type of event. And uh, let's see, crit maintained critical support, but some um, time the writing changed hands down on chain anal analysis. Analysts, Twitter, handy Ali charts pointing out phenomenon. Let me just skim this. Uh, so the Ethereum whales holding 1,000 to 10,000 ETH have been selling off their coins over the past two weeks. I wonder if it says why. Okay, probably fears of the economy, but I was sort of predicting or, hmm, it's not the right word, suggesting that maybe there would be some problems with this upgrade because they were trying to do and combine two things at once, the Chappelle and the Shanghai uh, merge. As a software developer and uh, I've had multiple software companies, uh, that's always tricky when you try to do two things at once. You never know where the other end of the spaghetti might break the uh, other thing you're trying to do where it's connected. Let's see. Sounds like a monster. So it doesn't really say why. Um, price stagnation. Okay. It's sort of non news, but worth noting. And then. Um, I guess we can pull this up quickly. On-chain data shows Ethereum massive inflows. Usually when we see coins going back onto exchanges, it's for selling, right? And so uh, that may be happening probably on the OTC market. But uh, I think Ethereum is definitely it's looking weak. I'm surprised to see that. And uh, let's see if it says anything important here. Bitcoin bearish signal miners are selling. So... We may want to pull up the hash ribbon indicator on Bitcoin just to see what's going on with the miners there. And we're looking for clues, guys. Always looking for clues. The charts usually tell the whole story and tell us the news. However, I can ignore these whale alerts, although that is a lot of them. They go all day long, though, so I didn't mean to click on that. Uh, these whale alerts are just mostly noise, but that's a pretty big number, half a billion USD uh, from an unknown wallet uh, worth of ETH, rather. So, but yeah, a lot of this, so it wouldn't be in replenish. All right, let's not, let's not dive into it. 
uh, too deeply. What I want to do, though, is I want to get over to, so that's ETH dominance. I did say we'd look at the total market cap, and then we'll look at the uh, miners, the the uh, <clears throat> hash ribbon indicator on uh, Bitcoin, and then we'll call it a day. On the total market cap, though, still encouraging. We are in a new upward trend channel, and so this is a bit of a clue. I'm glad we looked at it. You know, certainly some retest to pull back into this area would be expected. But, um, you know, we do want to see the total market cap hold above a trillion dollars. Of course, we've got this 21. Oh, I'm on the five day. Forgive me. Uh, so let's look at it this way. All right. I mean, you can let's let's look at a weekly. Usually daily weekly is important. So on the five day, the 21 has was 21 period EMA crossing the 50. But five days, not really a. It's sort of to remove noise, but it can't be relied upon. So what we really want to see is the on the weekly basis, the 21 week crossing above the 50 week. And uh, we're not seeing that, but we are seeing the total market cap hold above that 50 week EMA. So this is at least bullish here. I do like that. And however, on the weekly basis, yeah, we're we're bearish. It's, so we've got expect expect uh, sorry, expect more downside on the total market cap and all of crypto here breaking below 80. So we would expect to see a cycle, a full cycle on this. And last time we had that was back here when we saw a fairly significant drop actually on that. And so we hope that we're not looking at a similar type drop here, but it is um, entirely possible. And, and uh, so here's the thing, we have not finished the week yet. We, we want to be watching these things very carefully, though. The If the week, so we're just in on Tuesday for the week, we're beginning stages of this weekly, this weekly cycle. But so we want to watch this and see if we can't, if we can't bounce up higher on this and we don't see something like a recovery, then we could see some much deeper sell-offs on the total market cap. I have had these zones drawn for some time, by the way. If we get down into these green zones between 642 billion and 750 billion, call it 650 to 750 billion, I, I think that's definitely an accumulation zone. If if all hell goes to a handbasket, as they say, this region here would be where I'd be really looking to accumulate a lot. Uh, in uh, in the overall scheme of things, you know, this does appear to be a bear market rally. And uh, we've seen these before. So this this bear market cycle, I don't know. I hate to say may not be over. Our monthly charts are telling us we have bottomed. So I, uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to stick to my guns there until proven otherwise. And so let's just see. Yeah, there's a lot of things that could really drive the market higher. If the SEC Ripple case is decided in favor of Ripple, that could be a catalyst. Uh, so, but we just don't know you guys. So, uh, with that, let's take a look at the uh, hash ribbon indicator, but, um, but do keep this in mind. ERI TSI bearish on the weekly total market cap. And so what we should probably do here, or we'll do is we'll do in case we do pull back. What's the Fibonacci golden pocket target on that? That would be pulling back to the 924 billion level i'm going to drag one of these alerts up there i already have too many on here and just see because that would be a buy signal okay so gp target by and I put a question mark because we always want to overlay our other indicators on that but i'm going to set that alert right down in that 924 billion range uh because some um, if we do see a deeper sell-off, that would be the most likely bounce point, and then we could see this really take off. So, so that that is actually making more sense to me. The uh, circle here we can get rid of because it did not sort of do much. We'll keep. A, I'll move the highlight there for now. And so, um, yeah, for now we're holding that fifty week. If it starts breaking below the fifty week and the twenty one week, then I think this is likely. We'll see a deeper sell off to the nine hundred twenty five billion uh, region and the total market cap and everything else will follow. So uh, let's see. Let's jump back out of here and I get back to Bitcoin Daily and uh, the hash ribbon indicator. Then we will call it a day. So 
here is this chart unless there's anything specifically you guys want to watch and have me pull up just let me know and let's see the hash ribbon i think i have that already loaded on another chart but i'll put it on here just because it's open and nothing new on the hash ribbon indicator still in this buy zone usually it'll show capitulations uh, and i'm only looking down here you guys so you know it's been a very um been a great indicator uh it uh it did fail recently once but I uh, won't go into that too much. Essentially, the hash ribbon indicator, when it says buy, then Bitcoin typically does not go back below the prior cycle, mini cycle low. And this is the one that failed here because, of course, these, these, these three failed because this would have you believe that we would not go back below here or here. And, of course, we did. In the summer of 2021, we had that big sell-off, and it came down below here. So it's still worth noting, but um, uh, it can fail with market uh, sell-offs and the market news. So as we know, but it, it is one I like to watch, the capitulations as well. So these red zones show the capitulations. We're not seeing that here. We still are in a buy zone on the hash ribbon indicator, even though the miners maybe have, may have been selling the last few days. It doesn't look like that right now as of the last two days in May. Looks like they're buying, uh, they're currently buying, so that may have been some old news. All right, you guys. Uh, so with that, I'm going to call it a day here. I don't see, oh, I do see some new messages here. So let's see, what do we have here? Look at uh, Pirate J, I'd like to look at Deer. Deer, is that a crypto? Uh, it dropped as much as the 50 AAMA0. Yeah, uh, what are you saying here, Jay? Dero. Okay, I, I said I was talking about deer and farm animals. I'm not sure what you're talking about, Jay, but Dero. Gotcha. Uh, and only kidding. Uh, it's uh, it happens there. All right, so Dero on KuCoin. Let's pull it up there. Let's see the Dero tether pair. All right, so what do we have here? We've got. Let's get rid of the uh, hash ribbon indicator. Doesn't apply to this we'll open it up i mean um based on our indicators not looking strong i mean it's um you know uh the tsi heading down lower signal lines lower we have the red line in the uh trend indicator this uh, but just looking at this you know lower lows first sign of weakness right here lower lows and then of course we've got this this is going to keep coming down um i i can't see any reason why this would go up right here there's no support uh when in doubt zoom out i mean we yeah i mean you could see some support here but um what are what are we asking so based on our indicators let's put on the eri so we had a bullish eri here and it's kind of confirmed here so i can see this is one of those rare instances um, but I will say our indicators work best on tier one solid uh, long-term projects that uh, have a lot of volume and momentum. So what's the volume on this? Pretty low volume in this thing. Uh, volume dropping off significantly. So when you see this, and especially on KuCoin, which is a margin trading platform, when you see this kind of volume spike, uh, this is these are the margin traders piling in. I mean, on the bullish side, Dero looks great. We had a bullish ERI. TSI signal and bell that would have been the buy on this hindsight always 2020 but here I'm just showing you how our indicators would have caught that we had the bearish ERI and TSI going red followed by the signal so that would have been your sell signal uh, as well as this kind of lower highs in here kind of came up and retested but failed so that would have been your sell confirmation bullish ERI kind of a fake out right there and uh, what I would I do here, I would, if you're in this at this moment, I would have a tight stop loss right below there and wait for new re-entry signals. You know, you could see a bounce here, but this is a bearish. Uh, I mean, is is it a bull flag? Mm, not really. It's, you know, uh, if it zigzags around in here, maybe you've got a bull flag forming, but uh, it's not looking... Not looking great to me, but if this starts to bounce hard off of where we are, I mean, I'll put your stop loss, not financial advice, but for educational purposes. 
I'd have a stop loss right below here around six dollars forty because if it breaks that likely it's coming back down in this region look at the 21 and 50 day emas this is heading down it's looking like it'll cross down below it it could smooth out and go higher i can't predict the future obviously uh, this is a tough one but if it does break if it is a bull flag then uh your target on that you know could see some nice upside so i mean you uh it's it's up to you if you really like this project and you think it will hold if the tsi starts going green again and you wanted to jump on that with a uh, tight stop loss you know um preferably toward the lower end of the channel because as if it were a bull flag you'd want to kind of see this more of a more of the flagpole i mean i guess what we could do is is a, a little tighter version okay so that that's going to be on you i can't tell you what where this thing goes if you wanted to add more to it, it you know could it doesn't look great to me but i would say if you're like this you potentially if the bull flag plays out i mean it's 140 percent possible winner so if you wanted to put a trade on there and again not this is not me telling you to buy anyone to buy this not the case at all I'm not familiar with this project so don't listen to me this is strictly hypothetical and pure speculation so uh but uh here it's a 27 to 1 roi potential uh, although i mean that is if it goes all the way up here that's the bull flag case if you were to put kind of fibonacci on it a little bit more conservative targets golden pocket here up in this eight dollars 30 range and if we expand it on the Fibonacci's, uh, if you, but we're not in a bull market here, you guys. This is not not the time to be taking long trades, right? Bitcoin, I think pulls back total market cap. I think it all pulls back. I, I'm gonna just say, you know what? Did, never mind all this. If if you're in this, you might want a dollar cost average a little bit and have a stop loss right under here. But uh, I would not be a big buyer of this at, at this point. And uh, one of the things I've been doing lately, too, is on the TSI, just watching the slope of these highs, lower highs, lower highs. The clue that this thing was not looking strong here is no lower, lower high, lower high in here. Boom. And then it dropped. Uh, similarly, signs of strength are on this TSI. You start seeing higher lows. OK, uh, one new message. Let's see. And uh, all right. Well, that's all we have time for, everybody. Again, um, uh, thanks for joining us and if you are not yet in our crypto mastery group you can go to crypto mastery.online it'll redirect you to our actual website there and you can learn more about these indicators it's and as you can see um we didn't really look at the average true range here but the these signals the eri and tsi so powerful especially when we layer it in with the signal line and some of these other indicators you can read all about those here at cryptomastery.online amazing stuff here many of you are already using the indicators some user comments that are uh, all here and uh, we stand by this developed by a 25-year programmer my business partner he's also a quant engineer and professional trader uh, he builds algos and uh, live trading systems, and these are better than anything I've ever used, in, including and especially easier to read than the Cypher uh, indicator out there and any of the other ones that we have used. So uh, we can see some of that here, me showing these, in, these arrows getting into 527% runs 124% gains in Bitcoin and avoiding multiple 50% drops. So that's sounds interesting to you. Go to cryptomastery.online. Not here to be salesy. You're here to give you the tools to succeed. It's caught major market breakouts that you can see here. And you can also learn more about how we trade in our private group at moonstream.io slash M3. Includes these indicators and uh so just letting you guys know since we're on the youtubes now uh what am i doing here m3 yes there so you can find out all about that program it includes the indicators so uh live 
weekly classes and uh, chat room and access to me, et cetera, et cetera. So, all right, guys, no hard sell here. Not here to arm wrestle you, here to give you the tools to succeed in crypto. Uh, thanks very much. If you're watching the replay, please uh, like and subscribe to the channel, and uh, we will talk to you guys again next week. Take care, everyone.